Mariners lose six to three. They fall to 44 and 33 on the season, and they lose two of three to the Cleveland Guardi- Guardians. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm sorry, Cleveland Guardians. Guardians. I think I hiccuped and burped and self emulated at the same time. Go over the scoring place. Dylan Moore homers to left to score JP Crawford. That makes it 2 0 in the first inning. Guardians do get a run back in the first. Josh Naylor grounds into a double play to score a run. And then in the second inning, they tie the game at two with a Will Brennan homer to right center. Mariners get the lead back in the fourth. Ryan Bliss doubles off the wall to score Ty France. Three to two in the middle of the fourth. Fifth inning is problematic. Uh, Andre Semenez homers to center to score Stephen Kwan. Fourth three. And then Josh Naylor doubles to right to score Jose Ramirez. Five to three at the end of five. Guardians get another one in the eighth, a Will Brennan homer to right center, 6-3, and the Mariners don't get another run. Let's start with some positives. Uh, Dylan Moore, homers, walks, steals a base. Overall, I think that's a really nice game. We're going to have to talk about a Dylan Moore situation that I respectfully disagree with the manager of the Seattle Mariners about, but homer, walks, stolen base, nice to see, and it's Nice to see, too, because Dylan Moore was absolutely playing like words I won't say on this podcast, podcast, show, whatever you want to call it. But over the last two of the last three games, he's looked very good. So it's nice to see him start to turn things around. Uh, Ty France reaches twice. Uh, Victor Robles reaches twice. I actually think Victor Robles has looked pretty good since getting to Seattle. You know, we know what he can do defensively. We know that he is a guy who is a very nice pinch runner off the bench. If he could be a helper against lefties, I don't hate it. That's what they brought him in to do, and I think so far he's succeeding. Uh, Ryan Bliss shows a little bit of pop with that uh, hit off the wall. Uh, also draws a walk, a big walk, too. We'll talk about that situation. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it whatsoever. Those are pretty much the only positives offensively. Pitching-wise, I thought the bullpen did a nice job. Sacedo, an inning of scoreless baseball, gets the big double play. Stanek does issue a walk as well. Both Sacedo and Stanek issue walks, but Stanek works around it with a couple of strikeouts. I think he's looked fantastic as of late. I'm gaining more and more confidence. I'd still prefer him to be like my third best reliever, maybe even my fourth. Getting more confident in what I've seen from him. And Thornton does give up the homer, but he does get a couple of strikeouts. He's harder to trust, but, you know, I think three innings of one-run baseball from your bullpen is what you would like to see. Of course, you'd prefer to see three innings of shutout baseball, but that's not realistic. That's just not realistic. Not a lot of positives, if we're being honest with you, but now we get to talk about Simply Seattle, which is a big positive because they have the very best in Seattle Mariners stuff, but also the Supersonics, the Kraken, the Storm, the Sounders, Huskies, Cougars, a whole bunch of awesome Seattle sports stuff. And once you find all of it, it's already pretty darn cheap. But if you use code, if you use promo code MOLLYWAP15, M O L L Y W H O P15, you save 15% off your order by doing that. Really appreciate you guys checking them out because they are a great business. It also shows that you're paying attention to the show. Really appreciate Simply Seattle. Really appreciate you guys going to simplyseattle.com. A link in the description. I may have already said that, but I'll say it again. Thank you, Simply Seattle. The negatives. You lose the series. Is it a devastating series loss? I don't think so. If you told me that the Mariners were going to take one out of three, but sweep the Texas Rangers and take three or four from the White Sox. Sign me up. Sign me up. Now, I would have liked them to have played better over these last two games for sure. And thank goodness you hold on for the win on Tuesday, right? Because a sweep is always bad. (laughs) Obvious point is obvious, but sweeps can never really be justified that much. You know, unless you win like 14 in a row and then lose three in a row, then even then you're still like, hey, what's going on here? Losing a series in Cleveland, it's really hard to be too worked up. I did want to win this series, though, because I want to see them play well on the road against good teams, which they have not done. And I also, I want that second seed. I think having that second seed and having that week to set up that rotation is huge. 
the Mariners now will have to have a better record than the Guardians in order to get that. The tie won't be good enough. They lost two of four. They lost four of two or four of six. Math is hard. Words are harder, apparently. I, I would have liked the series win. But if you can justify a series loss in Cleveland, in Baltimore, those are the type of ones. In New York, those are the type of series losses that you can kind of go. Okay, in Kansas City as well. That being said, there are some negatives to talk about for sure. Uh, Luis Castillo was not good today. Five innings of five-run baseball. Does get four strikeouts. He issues a couple of walks. Gives up the two homers. You know, he just caught too much in the middle of the plate today. In particular, in that fifth inning. And that was a frustrating one, too, because he gave up the run two runs in the first. And he could have escaped without a run. There was a defensive gaffe there that I don't want to go too crazy about this stuff right now, but probably could have gotten out of that inning without giving up a run. He gives up the moonshot to uh, well, moonshots, probably too strong a term, but he does give up the Homer to Brennan, but he pitched really well in the third. He pitched well in the fourth. He gets two outs in the fifth and he just misses on a three, two pitch to Steven Kwan. And then he makes a huge mistake to Jimenez. That ball's hit out. He gives up the walk to Jose Ramirez. He gives up the steal to Jose Ramirez. It's also worth pointing out, J.P. Crawford dropped that baseball. I think they got Ramirez if he makes that catch. I don't want to go too crazy, like, defending Luis Castillo, because I, like I said at the beginning of the this segment, he wasn't good today. Caught way too much of the middle of the plate, and he especially did it on the pitches to Jimenez, the pitch to Brennan for the homer, and then the Josh Naylor double as well. Boy, I thought Josh Naylor, by the way, had a season-ending injury the way he reacted, and I'm glad he didn't, you know, but that was scary. I, I don't like seeing injuries. That should be, like, the most obvious point of all time, but it's always scary to me when I see stuff like that. But, yeah, Luis Castillo wasn't good. For the overwhelming majority of the season, he has been good. It's a little concerning that... He's pitched poorly in two of the last three on the road against good lineups. I just want to see him pitch better on the road. He's been unbelievable at home. Outside of like the first two starts of the year. He has been sensational. And I think he'll be fine on the road. But I want to see better results. I want to see better results. Offensively, uh, Julio had a pretty bad day. Garver had a really bad day. Uh, Mitch Hanniger had a bad day. I know he drew a walk, but those other at-bats were really bad. Locklear struggled. The concerning thing I'm telling you here is that these are all right-handed hitters, and they faced Logan Allen. And look, Logan Allen is not as bad as his ERA suggests. He had a couple of starts, like two starts, where he gave up a total of 14 runs that really have uh, pushed that ERA into a... Mark, that's a little bit um, unrealistic or not suggestive of what type of pitcher he is. But um, righty should do better against him. And seeing Garver struggle and Hanniger struggle, France, I know, gets on twice, but a couple of poor at bats. Lockley really struggled. Wasn't a good offensive effort. It wasn't a good offensive effort at all. Um, Let's talk about something that happens late in this game. I think it's the eighth inning that this happened. No, it was the seventh inning that this happened. Okay, so the Mariners are down two. And uh, trying to remember the exacts of the situation. Give me a second. It's been a long day. Okay, so Robles reaches on an infield single, and then Ryan Bliss has a terrific at bat and walks. So you have first and second, nobody out. J.P. Crawford is up. No, I would not have bunted. You're down by two. J.P. Crawford is still one of your most important offensive players. I'm not giving up that at bat. I'm not. So I don't mind that he hit in that situation. I mind that he missed a pitch that was pretty much down the middle of the play, and you could see the frustration from Crawford uh, on the fly out. So there's runners on first and second and one out. 
And Caleb Smith, one of the most effective relievers so far in baseball this year, is facing Dylan Moore, who, again, we talked about it, has had um, a lot of success in the last couple of days, but was really struggling coming into the series. And to his credit, and Service mentioned this, he does work a three-ball count, and you're not having Dylan Moore swing 3-0. And then he grounds into a double play after taking one strike and then just meekly grounds out into a tailor-made double play. I believe it was a 6-4-3. Yep. I think he got a pinch hit there. I think he got a pinch hit there. And especially with Josh Rojas wasn't in the lineup today. Dominic Canzone wasn't in the lineup today. I'm trusting those guys more than Dylan Moore against a really good right-handed pitcher. I thought it was a mistake. I thought it was a mistake. Now, it's also possible that the Seattle Mariners just decided that these are off days. And the teams do that a lot on the last game of a series, on a getaway day, where they say, you're not playing today unless there's an emergency. And that was kind of what I was thinking. And then I saw Josh Rojas pinch hit, and then I saw Cal Raleigh pinch hit. I think it was a mistake to trust more there. I like Dylan Moore. I think that Dylan Moore is a really good utility guy. If I cannot have him in the lineup against tough right-handed relievers, I'm not going to do so. I thought that was a mistake. I thought that was a mistake from service. Now, who knows what those guys do, yada, yada, yada. And then you had your 3-4-5 come up the next inning, and they were terrible. Rodriguez grounds out meekly to the pitcher. Uh, Rally does strike out swinging, and France strikes out looking against that same hurler. He's good. The Whites are the White Sox. The White Sox bullpen is terrible. The Guardians bullpen is fantastic. They're going to be a tough out. They are going to be a really tough out. I would go get some offense still, but they're going to be a tough out. Molly, my dog is snoring so bad. I don't think anything I'm saying is all that boring. Anyway, this was not my favorite decision of Scott Services. And it's not hindsight. I tweeted about it and suggested, hey, probably not the greatest decision to leave Dylan Moore in that situation. But I understand you go with the hot hand. The hot hand fallacy, of course, is a fallacy for a reason. It's not the reason they lost per se, but it wasn't my favorite decision. But maybe Scott Service is just a heck of a lot smarter than I am. It's possible. It's possible. Again, it's hard for me to be too angry about this. It's hard for me to be too angry about a series loss to Cleveland when you get the sweep against Texas. But they got to start playing a little better on the road for sure. And you have a really good chance to do that starting Friday against a dreadful Marlins team. Now, look, last time they went on the road and faced a dreadful team, it wasn't as dreadful as we thought, the Washington Nationals, but you didn't play well. Anything but a series win here is a horrible result. I think you got to win the next two series and have a five and four road trip. I guess if you lose two of three to Tampa Bay, it's not a huge disaster. I sure would like to win that series with Castillo and Kirby pitching in those games. But you got to win the Miami series. Those, those are the type of series that you have to win. And rather, and when I say have to, I just mean those are the type of series losses that are harder to excuse, of course, because they're going to lose series to bad teams. It happens. It should not be to Miami. Should not be to Miami, even with three quality arms, you know, talented arms for sure. In uh, Rogers, Lazardo, and Gar Garrett going for those guys, I think you got to win this series. Are you like me? Are you not struggling to be too disappointed, or are you mad as heck? Either result is totally fine. Please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Please hit join. I uh, just posted one of my MLB draft previews. Four ninety nine a month. It supports the channel a whole heck of a lot, and I think you get a bunch of really cool content with it. Really appreciate the support as always. Bummer, but how big a bummer really is it?